So two years ago, I built the John Suskovich stress-free chicken tractor, and I came across a few things in the book that were challenging. I recorded all the videos of me building it, and I just never got around to uploading it to YouTube. <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully get this out to you now, and it will be able to help you in your build of the stress-free chicken tractor. So you start off by cutting all your pieces. After that, you need to use your circular saw to make the half lap joints. You set the blade to only go half the depth of your board, make a ton of cuts in that area, and then you can chisel out the pieces. So I just finished up with the half lap joints and everything went really well. Before you screw everything together, go ahead and dry fit those pieces to make sure everything lines up well. Here I am working on the door and I have run into a couple problems. This is usually where I hear people saying they run into problems, so I was a little bit concerned when I started. Let me show you what I found so far. Okay, basically, um, this is how we've decided on laying out the door. This is not how it is explained in the book. It's actually poorly explained in the book. The 2x4 that we cut the half lap joints in, this is actually your part L. So you don't need part L. Part K actually fits into that just fine. Now with your door part, this, You have this part that goes on top. That's part J. We have another J at the bottom that we decided to cut and put between I, the two I side pieces. And that's kind of how you make it work. Um, the other thing that we've changed is this is part K. Part K we made 64 inches long which is different than what the book says you're gonna need to cut some brackets to hold the door and the door frame together they're 15 and 3 8 inch long on the long side and they're cut on 45 degree angles on both sides you're gonna need to cut two for the door frame and four for the door. This is just using scrap from your 1x4s. The brackets are going to go on the outside of the door and the inside of the door frame. Once everything's together I'll show you what that looks like. Next glue and screw your half lap joints together. I didn't think to use my square until I was in the middle of this project, but I definitely recommend using one. If things are off just a little bit, the half lap joints won't line up. On these corner braces, I just used some scrap material from another project. Don't be afraid to use materials you already have. So when you're attaching the sides to each other, either get yourself a friend to help you or get yourself some kind of planter anything really to hold up the sides as you screw it together. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you can be notified of our new videos. And now I'm gonna be bending the conduit. A quick way to mark your conduit is to mark the first one, line them up, and then mark the rest. This was my first time bending conduit, and I messed up my first two pieces. In the book, you're told to draw your center line, and then mark five inches on either side. It shows this arrow lining up with this side mark, and then the star lining up with the center mark. 
I'm not an expert, so maybe I did it wrong. But when I tried lining this up the first time, my bend was not perfectly centered on the pipe. The second time I tried lining up the star, and that didn't work either. So this is what I came up with. I lined up this part, the end, with my 5 inch mark. By doing that, my bend was perfectly in the center. Leave a comment below if this is something you had difficulty with, or you know the right way to bend these conduit pieces. Once you figure out how to line up the bender, it's actually pretty simple. You just put your foot on the conduit bender and push down with your foot while pushing down on the handle. It automatically stops at 90 degrees so you don't have to worry about over bending. If you've done it correctly, your center mark will be in the middle of your bend and you can do a happy dance. We're going to bend the 45 degree angles into the conduit. I just wanted to point out that at this point I am making a mistake. So don't do what I'm doing right now. I'll explain that in a little bit. But basically I didn't make the 45 degree in the right spot. Okay, so I just attempted to do the 45 degree angle in the conduit. <laughs> and it didn't go so well. I did not measure five inches from the end. I was thinking it was gonna be five inches to the bend, which is incorrect. So when you're doing that, make sure you measure five inches from the end of your pipe. Um, I also, I didn't build the jig that he recommends in the book. I just got myself some planters again, those <laughs> handy planters, and put them on either side of the pipe and that held it in place. Worked great. Now if you do make a mistake, don't lose hope. There is a way of fixing it. You can turn your conduit bender around and slide the handle onto your pipe and kind of reverse the bend that you put in the pipe. I wasn't able to perfectly fix it, but it was good enough. And really, there's a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to doing this roof with the pipes. So don't be too hard on yourself if this is your first time. I just finished adding the electrical conduit to the roof. Because these guys need a home. I have to now put the chicken wire on. Oh, and I also added in some nest boxes and a roost. So I'll show you that. One of the things that I started doing was putting the roof on before the hardware cloth. I changed my mind. I didn't want it on the outside. I didn't want the hardware cloth on the outside. I wanted it on the inside. I'll show you what that looks like. I feel like it's a little bit neater that way. And I also put the roof on the inside of the chicken tractor frame. So I'll show you that. Okay, so here it is with the hardware cloth and the roof on. Um, like I said, I put the roof on the inside. And I also have my roost and my nest boxes. Let me start off by saying painting these boxes was not a good idea. They did not last. The paint ended up scratching and peeling off, so I do not recommend that. If I was to do this again, I would probably use milk crates. I basically made a little shelf and have my little bracket. I've got two screws holding it up on the back, one screw holding it in the front. Um, I cut it with my circular saw, so they are not, one's up here, one's down here, one's up, they're not perfect, but they'll work. I think I'm going to add a piece on the front that way the hay and whatnot won't come out. Still working on the design for that. Then I have the roost attached. Um, I think I'm going to put another one because if we have all of our laying chickens in here they need like a foot per chicken and that's only eight, a little less than eight feet for a roost. My hardware cloth like I said is on the inside which I think looks a lot neater. I bought the wrong length of hardware cloth. I kind of guessed and I thought 25 feet was going to be enough. And it's not. So, 
my solution was to cut my three foot wide hardware cloth perfectly in half and thankfully I had just enough but as you can see I just had one square on the top and one square a little less than one square to staple onto the bottom but it works that's all you need so if you do the same thing um, you can get away with a three foot wide 25 foot long hardware cloth Fast forward a couple days and the chicken wire is on. It's being held on by the zip ties. When you're doing your zip ties, make sure that you have them poking into the inside rather than the outside, just so your tarp doesn't get scratched or ripped and you should be good to go. It is finally finished. Still have to put the tarp on, but it's done. Let me show you a couple things. We added nest boxes and roosts. So I have one on this side and then a lower one that matches the nest boxes here. Well, hopefully this video has helped you. Now you know some tips and tricks that I learned along the way and you'll be able to build your chicken tractor in no time.